In a previous video we looked at how photo emission peaks and the relative intensity of photo emission peaks combined with information about the background could infer a layered structure within a material. However, survey spectra do not represent all the information that's available by XPS. And if we want to investigate these samples with layered structures in more detail, then high resolution spectra are required. These high resolution spectra provide us chemical state information in terms of photo emission peaks and chemical shifts of photo emission peaks that are just not available within survey data. The survey data include peaks that have a resolution that will allow us to see the difference between aluminium 2S and 2P, but any structure within these peaks is missing. So with higher resolution data, we would like to think that we can see the chemical state information that might be here within these aluminium peaks, and indeed we can. When we display the aluminium 2P and the aluminium 2S, we can see clearly oxide and metal peaks within these data. This is the aluminium 2P where we can see a peak that is consistent with aluminium oxide and we also see peaks that are consistent with aluminium metal. The advantage for high resolution data providing separation of aluminium oxide from the metal means that we can calculate how much aluminium oxide we have and we should be able to relate how much aluminium oxide from the aluminium 2P to the amount of oxide that we calculate from the oxygen 1S. So the intensity of these peaks from the oxygen should correlate with the intensity of these oxide peaks that we see in the aluminium. While we could create peak models for each one of these VAMAS blocks and then quantify regions and components across these VAMAS blocks, there is an advantage in analyzing the data in a similar way for these high resolution data to how the survey spectra are analyzed. And this will involve creating what are effectively pseudo survey spectra. So we overlay in each one of these display tiles a row of VAMAS blocks. And these represent data that were acquired from the same sample. They're not necessarily acquired using the same conditions for example the energy step size for these aluminium data is not the same as the energy step size for the oxygen so this is a set of data that will will require a an irregular data set form in the VAMAS format and that is to say we want to use this button here that says merge irregular rather than the merge regular the merge regular requires an a uniform step size for all spectra but if we use merge irregular, then a pair of VAMAS blocks are created from each display tile in the previous file with spectra overlaid in the tiles. So we have now two VAMAS blocks, one for each measurement. And these measurements include the data from the aluminium, the carbon, and the oxygen. So it will be possible to create a peak model that will relate information from the aluminium directly to the oxygen, for example. Once we've created a pair of VAMAS blocks, such as these, where the data are now merged to form these single VAMAS blocks out of multiple spectra, we can then apply the same procedure as was performed for the survey data. That is to say, if we overlay these two spectra in the active tile and then press the different spectra button, we'll create a new file that gives us a sequence of spectra that provide insight into how these two spectra merge from one to the other. And if we then search through these data, we can identify, as I've already done, two spectra that are essentially within the two original spectra. And these represent alternative perspectives of the data. These component vectors can be used to understand the original data. So let's copy these and move these through to a file that contains merged VAMAS blocks of the original data. Copy button. These two VAMAS blocks represent the component data that have been calculated using the difference method. So I overlay these in the active tile and then I select the two VAMAS blocks that contain the original data. Then using the PCA property page, 
generate spectra, we end up with a least square solution that is an exact solution because of the nature of how these were calculated. I can now simply display the original spectrum overlaid with these two component spectra. And if I zoom in onto the aluminium, you can see that the component spectra have the high resolution information in terms of oxide and metal peaks, but we have a breakdown of the original data in terms of a sum of these two component spectra. And the problem now is to understand how these component spectra relate to the original samples. So this is one example of the sample, and this is the other sample. And now it becomes clear that the red spectrum changes significantly in proportion to the blue spectrum between these two samples. So understanding this red spectrum and this blue spectrum that have been calculated will help understand how the original samples can be compared. Out of these two components, the red one is interesting in as much as it looks very much like a surface layer of aluminium oxide on aluminium. You can see we have the aluminium metal peak here and corresponding plasmon peaks. Aluminium 2S similarly has plasmon peaks. So put together, this has a strong appearance of aluminium oxide on aluminium metal. Whereas the blue spectrum, you can see the aluminium oxide and the metal, but the plasmon peaks are blurred. So this suggests that we have some other scattering process that's going on in addition to what you'd expect for a, a layer of aluminium oxide on metal. So if we now look at a, a peak model that been, has been constructed on the component spectrum that includes aluminium oxide from the aluminium 2P and the oxygen 1S, then comparing the ratio of these peaks will give us an indication of whether there's consistency in this theory that this is indeed aluminium oxide at the surface. And when we perform this analysis, and you can see this expression here is giving the ratio of all of these component peaks relative to twice the aluminium 2P that's assigned as aluminium oxide, then the corresponding oxygen peak here is looking close to 3. It certainly has the appearance now of an aluminium oxide. And more importantly, the stoichiometry would suggest that this aluminium oxide is very much at the surface. So we can interpret this component as deriving from an aluminium oxide layer at the surface of both of these samples. The second of these two components is different from the first and it's different in the background shape. The background does not contain these metallic plasmon structures as clear and as well formed as the other component, yet we have evidence of metallic aluminium. We have oxide, which is very similar in shape to the previous component. However, when we look at the ratio of the oxide from the aluminium signal compared to the oxygen signal, which is at a, a lower kinetic energy, there does appear to be attenuation of this oxygen signal relative to the aluminium. We also have a very strong carbon 1S. So put together, this would suggest that the aluminium, as seen here, is buried beneath a layer of carbon. So the interpretation of this decomposition is that we have a surface layer of aluminium oxide that is on top of a carbon layer that is burying another aluminium oxide layer. These high resolution data have given us an additional insight into these samples compared to the survey measurement. When we looked at the survey measurement, we could conclude that we had an aluminium oxide at the surface we couldn't actually see the aluminium metal as such. We thought there was an overlay because we have some carbon here. The second component suggested that we had a similar relationship, that we had an overlay of carbon and we had a substrate that was aluminium oxide. And we could see the shapes in the background were consistent with this type of conclusion.
However, once we go to the high resolution data, we can see that we've got some aluminum oxide and metal potentially at the surface. So the sample is perhaps along these lines that we have an aluminum oxide and metal, some adventitious carbon, and there's also signal coming from a carbon layer that is sufficiently thin to allow some of the aluminum oxide and metal beneath it to actually appear in the spectra.